do you think this is um because um lots, lots of the um, crypto exchanges have come under skating criticism about the, you know, they don't about how they do not you know really support the bitcoin ecosystem, bitcoin ecosystem they do not you know aside from probably okx and um bitfinex no other exchange none of the other exchanges actually support and lightning network right now and you think it's motivated by the fact that uh you see you mentioned demand but do you think it's you know driven by greedier business quite all right but you know bitcoin is what is what actually you know gave birth to this um crypto industry and um there's kind of lack of support don't you think do you think there's a lack of incentive to actually support um liquid sites like liquid and the rest of them basically just support the bitcoin ecosystem to go like you said they are the gatekeepers why is there lack of interest actually support the bitcoin ecosystem to grow they they can do it incentives i mean yeah running a node at home is one running production mode is, is complicated you know you need to have failover disaster recovery i think there's a lot of challenges there also, I mean, sidechains is an interesting one in that, you know, Bitcoin's, it's, it's, I think we're all on the same page. It, when it comes to the concept of sound money, it's, 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 it's won that argument. And no one is saying that Bitcoin is not sound money. So maybe Ethereum or Solana, or I don't know what the latest one is, uh, Terra, you know, you could argue and say that they're more or less sidechains to Bitcoin. I mean, if wrapped Bitcoin in Ethereum was that isn't that 16 billion or something the last time i said essentially they've become bitcoin sidechains anyway so you know a lot of these DeFi protocols i think one of them got hacked the other day was it badger dow that was a bitcoin DeFi protocol using wrapped bitcoin on ethereum so at a very high level that is a form of you know a form of a sidechain you may not like the implementation you may think wrapped bitcoin is somewhat centralized maybe it is but they are a lot of these blockchains which are easier to integrate into exchanges and i dare say exchanges are more incentivized because these site these uh, blockchains can give them you know a bunch of tokens <laughs> but they are essentially operating like bitcoin sidechains bad ones but you know as long as they don't try and be sound money i don't really have an issue with that yeah the, the, i'll say the problem is generally the money isn't it i mean yeah. eos has they raise so much money and if you if you if you get eth or have some thing and then you have a token and then you airdrop it and blah, 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 then people get it free and then people are incentivized to spread it on twitter and tell their friends they get it and then they can sell mm -hmm. it and so that's what it's, it's money seems to be the issue when it comes to, to bitcoin related things nicholas what, what's your take on on some of these uh, platforms like Stacks or RSK, where they're trying to basically mimic what's happening on Ethereum um, with Bitcoin. I don't know much about Stacks, although I, you know, I did go to a presentation. I mean, I know a lot about. I didn't used to know a lot about Rootstock. But I don't think there's much demand. I, I sometimes think Rootstock is like the bust. Or the RSK is the bust that no one wants. Bitcoiners don't like it because it's it's doing Ethereum type stuff. The Ethereum guys don't like it because it's working on the Bitcoin blockchain. But yeah, that's what that, that feels like. I, I've not really looked into stacks, to be honest. You know, I think there's, I don't have a problem with, you know, if Bitcoin is sound money and it's being used as a wrapped Bitcoin in, in, in Ethereum or Solana, whether that's on Ethereum and Solana versus stacks or big um, RSK, to me, it doesn't really bother me. I don't think it's a big issue. Are you a maximalist? No, I'm a technologist. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, no, but, we're, we're, but, that, but that's one of the things that's interesting about Bitcoin. You know, you have people like Michael Saylor saying, I don't know, it's property. You've got people like Jack Dorsey who says it's money. Yeah. Both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton both hate it. You know, it's, it's, it's whatever you want to make it. I mean, I'm not, yeah. I, didn't like, I didn't like Ethereum when I first got into it, when it first came out, because I, I thought it would never scale. It clearly hasn't. That's why they're doing Ethereum version two. But I'm open-minded. I think there's some brilliant work going on in Monero, for example. I think that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm asking because, um, as you probably might be aware, you know, Bitcoin maximalism has come under you know intense you know scrutiny and criticism recently because they think that it's turning people away. I saw it um, a thread by I, I just you know remember this as um, Ricardo mentioned um, Stacks, the a tweet from um, a thread tweeted uh, thread from um, Stacks uh, founder. Um, Neeb, I think that's his name, and he was, you know, he was, he was like, um, Bitcoin maximalism has outlived its usefulness, and it's probably turning, you know, turning people away from it, um, Bitcoin and pushing them to other chains like Ethereum, where they go and do all this and fancy NFT and DeFi things. So, um, do you agree with that sentiment? Like you mentioned, you're you're um, 
techno maximalists or technologists, you know, in that sense. So do you agree with that kind of sentiment that, you know, maximalism is, is currently useless as it is? It's, it's do, doing more harm than, you know, than good. I think it's a bit irrelevant. I mean, <laughs> Twitter's entertainment, let's be honest. People put things to get engagement. And a lot of the guys on Twitter are running podcasts. It's part of their business, you know. And, you know, if you say something controversial, you're going to get more engagement. Um, yeah, I think one of the issues in crypto is there's a lot of noise in, in terms of how many people are building. I was surprised. Yeah, I was surprised when, like, for example, Ruben Samsung wrote the, the state chains paper, why no one looked at building it. And people always ask me, who else is building state chains? And I said, no one. And, you know, I think the stack stuff, I mean, I looked at it briefly, but I, I think sometimes it, I don't, it doesn't, yeah, he hasn't been able to get mindshare like the Ethereum guys, like the Solana guys, like I don't know, Polkadot guys. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. But I think maximalism, it's interesting because I think, yeah, I was around in the block size war and it clearly was needed because, you know, a bunch of VCs got in a room and wanted to change the, the consensus rules of Bitcoin. And that was ridiculous. You know, it really was. And a lot of that maximum came in from there. But I mean, ultimately, it's just noise on Twitter. Some of the maximists have reached out to me when, um, you know, we released Mercury, we're very supportive. I mean, you know, Stephen Levera, he invited me to be on his show. He's clearly a Bitcoin maximist. And subject never really came up. He was just asking me about, you know, the technology. And I think, yeah, I'm, I'm quite open that I look at other blockchains. As I said, I think, you know, it's technology, but, you know, I think we have to sometimes separate the, the entertainment of Twitter from what's being happened. and. Yeah, I think in another world, if counterparty had been more successful, if they'd have got, you know, things like counterparty and what was Tether built on, Omni Lair, if they'd have had better marketing, if they'd have had VC support that like maybe Ethereum and Tezos had, maybe a lot of these blockchains wouldn't have existed. I mean, I'm open to that, but that hasn't happened. That time has passed. It's time to move on. Since you said that you're very open-minded, what you're currently building with Mercury, can it be done on the Ethereum or it's something that is... I mean, due to this you know, build of Bitcoin, is basically domiciled to Bitcoin as it is. Yeah, I mean, we could build it, but I doubt it we would. I mean, it's, it's hard to think of doing something on Ethereum, for example, without a token. Um, also, I don't think there's a demand for it. Um, one of the reasons why Mercury is quite useful for Bitcoin is because it, it does have a, uh, you know, the scripting language of Bitcoin is, is very rigid. But, you know, wherever there's a negative, there's a positive. Bitcoin's very much ossified, and that's why people trust it as sound money. Um, you know, I don't know what Ethereum is right now. <laughs> I mean, if you read uh, Vitalik's latest blog post, he doesn't know what Ethereum is right now. So the negatives around Bitcoin not changing, being ossified is, is you know, I, in 50, when people ask me what coin to invest in, like, I say, look, Bitcoin's going to be around for the next 10 years. Ethereum, I can't answer that question. Maybe the latest kid on the block when it comes to a smart contracting layer, Solana, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be a better version of that in five years' time. Whereas if you're looking at an ossified layer, like, you know, as a, as a hard currency, Bitcoin's clearly won that war and that, that's what it is. Yeah. You may make more money buying other coins or have more fun building on other blockchains, but they're, they're much more fluid. You, you, you can't stake something long-term on that. So. You sound like a maximalist right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, I, yeah, with the age of Twitter, everyone wants to label someone, you know, you're a maximalist, you're an appeaser. I, don't, I really don't know. I mean, I'm open-minded. I play with all this stuff. I like playing with technology. I'd be honest. It's like martial arts. I mean, I'm at the age of 40. I decided to learn BJJ and re relearn everything. Yeah, so I'm probably not the best person. Maybe I change my mind too much. So, well, it's good to it's good to be open-minded, right? Uh, and yeah. to consider alternatives at all times. That's kind of like the way I like to see things. Like, uh, like uh, just, as just as you said, if, if people who don't know about crypto ask me about, I just say, look, just buy Bitcoin. If, it's going to be the thing that you know sticks around it's the most it's the most simple i guess in a way and it works yeah. it's correct everything functions it's you know it's the way to go and uh, but obviously i'm like if you're if you're a gambler go ahead and like have a look at some other things if you want to that's the way i see it and i guess i like to look at like look at what's going on elsewhere because you can obviously take ideas from there and you can keep up to date with things and see what i you know what's floating around what people are interested in because you never know where you might get inspiration um and but you never know you know what's gonna happen in the world <clears throat> it would make my life easier if everything was bought in bitcoin but i just think that ship maybe sailed yeah <laughs> mm. 
Um, and I think NFTs are fun. I mean, I, I, mean, I have a daughter who loves that stuff. But, um, well, I, I did you... have one. I did have one. I sold it, though. I, I, when I first, well, this is like ages ago, I don't know, maybe December or January of this year or December last year, I got that one of the NBA Top Shot packs. So I was like, oh, this is, it's only like $6 or something. And I made a massive profit as well. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, before, before Ethereum came out, I spent more of my time playing with things like Counterparty and Mastercoin and things like that. I thought they were quite interesting and colored coins. But I've just accepted that that knowledge is useless. It didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> It could be that in the in the future the that that knowledge will somehow be relevant, right? Like you'll have a step up on other people. Who knows? Well, know. I just yeah. recently spoke to John Carvalho, and he was talking about how he's going to be using Omni for his his new uh, company synonym for like tokenization and stuff. So I mean, I did like Counterparty, but you know, I remember at the time Counter was it? I can't remember either Counterparty or Omni layer was kind of criticized by the they weren't called the Bitcoin Maxis then, but you know. I'd say the Bitcoin hardcore people because they were burning Bitcoin to, to create those tokens. So you're always going to get controversy. But Yeah, I remember seeing, reading about that. I think yeah. it was Omni, but I'm not going to say that definitively. Yeah, uh... to, to, to get them, I remember you had to send Bitcoin to a certain burn address. And back then, some people said it was you know, it's evil to burn Bitcoin. Yeah, so You're wasting a precious resource. I remember all that controversy. So Not, not very purist. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you end up being like, there's no truer Scotsman, you know, who's the most purist? You know, gets a bit high school issue. All right, so I, I'll be interested to see what further, because obviously, uh, I can't remember, I can never remember who said this, but I really like the, the phrase. It was, I think it was some Ethereum DeFi guy or something, but he said uh, in one of his articles, it was like uh, bear market, bull development, bull market, bear development. So it's obviously, well, which like, kind, of, kind of makes sense, right? <laughs> but I've always said that Ethereum, I, I've never been a fan of the protocol, but some of the people building stuff on Ethereum, yeah, there's some good stuff. Like, I think the ZK Rollup stuff is interesting. Although, you know, I don't know if people remember, ZK Rollups was invented by a Bitcoiner. It was called, uh, someone proposed it around 2012. I think it was Greg Maxwell. It was called Coin Witness. So if you do a search on, for coin witness on Bitcoin uh, talk, you'll see that's basically what a ZK rollup is or, was it, yeah, one of the ZK things. So, yeah, there's some interesting stuff, but I think you just have to stay open-minded, not get into religious wars. And, then... and you have to wade through the crap <laughs> to find the odd, the odd diamond in the rough kind of thing. I think is the way I see it. But, um, but I, I guess the, 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 the crux of it is that it'll be interesting to see uh, if and as we went into some kind of bear market over the next year or so or a couple of years, um, it'd be interesting to see how things change and and whether you know, how cinnamon goes, which is John Cavallo's project, how how um, how your entire project goes, how you know how many people pick up on things and start building things more because it does feel to me as if in the bull market there's a lot less being built. Um, that that's always the, the the feeling I get. I think maybe there's multiple reasons for that, but. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see as we as we enter like a downturn, even as we enter a downturn in the market at some point. Um, I'm kind of excited to see what happens and how things develop and what survives. Um, and yeah, I and think I, what you're doing and building will probably survive. So, uh, from yeah, and as I said, I think state chains. I mean, we've built the first release, and you know, obviously we um, we saw coin swap as 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 a as a as a, as a tool on state chains to make it commercially viable. I, I, you know, I like to think that maybe there's some use cases that we haven't thought about for state coins. I mean, you know, may, maybe someone's going to do some sort of NFT virtual open dime on top of the protocol. And I think that's sometimes like when, you know, people ask me, what about Taproot? Well, how's that going to change? And I said, well, after Taproot's implemented, you're going to see, you know, developers come and think of things that no one's thinking about right now. I think that'd be quite interesting. I mean, that's what you can hope for and create, you know, open it up a bit. <laughs> fingers crossed right yeah um well i mean i we 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 i think we're approaching literally a, an hour um so now is probably a, a good time to to wrap up the conversation i mean um i suppose the the question for for you is, is is there anything you wanted to before we do wrap up is there anything you wanted to say or uh anything you want to promote obviously people can can check out um uh check check out your 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 company um and they can check you on twitter as well um if you want to give any sort of information i guess about that um go ahead yeah i do i, I do have one last question oh, sorry, uh, sorry what next like i'm pretty interested with, uh, with in mercury right now i'm gonna go back to you know give it a try so what's next can we expect for, you know 
users like me, probably retards like me who, you know, are trying to, you know, get into, you know, privacy and what can we expect in the future? I would love you to basically join the state chain torch and uh, get the coin, play with it, maybe do a few swaps and send it on and then, you know, tell us if it's easy to use or not. But, you know, in the state chain torch, you know, one of the things about the state chain torch, people don't realize there's no transaction fee for you. This is all happening off chain. So anyone can uh, download the wallet, you know, find the state chain torch on Twitter and, and, and have a play. But that's, you know, I, I hope that we're kind of, we take the beta logo off our website in the next month. And, you know, we start attracting more users. Um, for us personally, we want to look at ways of integrating Lightning. Clearly, there's, you know, strong momentum on Lightning. And, you know, there's been a lot of debate about how Lightning and state chains can work. You know, and, uh, that's where our focus is. And, you know, you know we, we, we're going to be working more and more to make this wallet easier to use so that privacy is not this scary thing. It's not this, uh, you know, a, a lot of people are scared of privacy as well that, you know, they, they get it wrong and they lose their coins. And I think that's uh, what, what, what we have to do. So, but, but yeah, I, I, I would like people to download the wallet and join the state chain torch and have some fun. Well, I'll be downloading the wallet straight away after this interview. So <laughs> I, I hope to be able to give you some feedback um, yeah. if I don't get sidetracked by something else. But I'll uh, I'll try and do that, or if I don't forget to tell you the feedback, which is usually what happens in these uh, oh. circumstances. <laughs> Not very yeah, be good. brutal. It helps. Remember, yeah, you know, my team are they're engineers, so yeah, you know, they they use Electrum. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I'm not knocking Electrum, but you know, Electrum was a wallet designed for engineers, not not for not for my mother. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've had my my uh, fair share of Electrum struggles over over time. Uh, so I understand what you're saying. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely check it out and and, and uh, try and re remember to give you some some tips. And I guess to anyone out listening, um, uh, please download Mercury Wallet and give it a try. So mm -hmm. all anyone can ask. Um, if you check it out, just type into Google, uh, and you'll you'll find the wallet. Um, but yeah, I guess is there, is there anything else you want to say at all before we head off? No, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed talking about other things as well. It's, uh, it's a nice diverse chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. It was it was awesome to to have you uh, on the pod, and and it's great to just you know get to understand uh, someone behind uh, you know an important inventation, an important idea, uh, and the why and the how and and also, just I think definitely you've provided me with a much clearer understanding with some of your analogies as well of like uh, you know how the state chains and coin swaps work. Um, so, and also I guess understanding the difference between coin swap and coin join. Like I, I felt like I knew some of like the differences, but now I it feels a lot clearer um, mm. as to to what the drive is and and the trade offs or reasons are for for going one or the other. So it's much appreciated. Um, but yeah, thanks obviously, uh, Jerry for popping in. Um, sorry to, uh, didn't, I didn't introduce you in the beginning, <laughs> but, uh, for anyone listening, it's cause he wasn't here at the beginning, but he popped in and, and thanks to, uh, Ricardo as well, as always for, for joining and yeah, thanks so much, Nicholas. It's been amazing to, to have you on today and it's been much appreciated and hopefully, uh, once you guys out of beta and, uh, you know, things move further along, um, then we can have you back in the future at, at some time. Um, but un until then it's been great. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, we love you. Have a wonderful day, hour, week, month, year, life. Uh, and uh, we'll see you all next time. And keep buying Bitcoin. Mm -hmm.